Today we're going to talk about how to create a comment section inside a website using PHP code. Now, the way I'm going to show you guys how to do this is going to be slightly different than I think other people might teach you how to do it because we are going to do this in two different ways. The first way we're going to do it is where you don't have to be logged in using a login system in order to write comments. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know some people out there don't know how to create a login system yet and still wants to learn how to do this. Now, the second way we're going to do it after we've done it the first way is to take the comment section and make it so that you have to be locked in using a login system before you can write any kind of comments. So we're basically going to take this episode and continue to build on it till we have the final episode where we do actually add you know, the login system to it. So if you don't want to learn how to do this with a login system, just go ahead and follow the next couple of episodes and I'll let you guys know when we start including the actual login system. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here in this episode is we're going to go ahead and set up the database we need for the comment section and just set up the basic HTML part that we need to have before we can write any kind of comments. So what we're going to do here is make sure we do actually have XAMPP turned on because we do need to connect to some type of database. And I'm using my local database in this case. So I'm just going to go ahead and use XAMPP for this. Now that I have it on, we do actually need to have a root folder for the website. Now I just created a folder inside my htduct folder inside XAMPP called comment section. So as you guys can see, it's completely empty. I have no files in here yet. So after we have this, we can actually go ahead and open up our PHP my admin, which is where we can actually go in and create databases that we're going to use on our website. So inside PHP my admin, I'm going to click on databases at the very top here, and I'm going to create a database called comment section. Now you don't actually have to call this the same as your root folder name. I'm just calling it this because it makes sense to me. So after I've actually written it out, I'm going to click create. Now, as you guys can see, after we hit create, it's going to take us straight to the database where it says no tables found in database. So we do actually need to create the tables we're going to use to create the comment section. So the first thing we're going to do before we start coding anything for the website is that we're going to go ahead and go to the SQL tab up here in the top and write the SQL code that we need to write to create a table for the actual comments because we do actually need to save the comments somewhere which is going to be inside the database using our table here. Now, if you're not familiar with PHP my admin and creating databases, I highly recommend you go back and watch either my tutorials or someone else's tutorials and how to create tables and databases because you need to know how to do this before you create comment sections, okay? So now that we're in here, Let's go ahead and create a table by say create table space comments because why not just call it comments space parentheses semicolon. Now I'm just going to go ahead and move down my parentheses to the next line so we have a split here and then we're going to go ahead and create the necessary columns that we need inside our comment section table. The first one we're going to put in here is going to be the ID for the comments. So I'm just going to go ahead and say C ID, which is comment ID space int for integer type, which is going to be set to 11. So we can write 11 characters of numbers space, not null, because we don't want this to be left as null inside the database. We do actually want to have some kind of thing in here space. Then we're going to set it to auto increments because we need this to automatically increase by one each time we include a new post. And we don't have to do this inside our PHP code. It will actually automatically do this so we don't have to do it ourselves. So we're going to say auto underscore increment in capitalized letters. Space primary space key. So we do actually have this set as our primary key inside our table. We're going to say comma and go to the next line. So now we can actually start putting in the information that we want inside our comment section. And that's totally up to you guys. You can follow the way I'm doing it here or you can create your own way. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and focus on a user ID so we can actually see who wrote the comment, a date so we can see what time they wrote the comment, and the message so we can actually see what message they actually wrote and posted for our whatever we're posting on here. So the first one is going to be UID 
space watcha parentheses which is a data type with characters and I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to 128 because I don't think a user ID is gonna be more than this space not null comma then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this line because no need to write everything twice and paste it underneath here two times. Now the second one is going to be changed to the date, which is going to be a date time format, uh, which we're gonna use for this example. So I'm just gonna write the name as date and set the, the what do you call it, the data type to date time. And it's also gonna be called not null. Underneath here, we need to write message as a name and we're gonna change it from vacha to text which is a binary type of text, uh, which doesn't need to have some kind of limit like we do with Watcha. And we're also gonna set this one to not null and make sure that you remove the last comma. So after we have this, let's actually go ahead and copy, uh, copy whatever we have here and paste it inside our text editor and save it. Because it's always nice to have our SQL code saved somewhere so we don't have to double write something in case we screw something up and we need to write the entire table one more time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it inside my root folder as, I don't know, sql.sql or something. So after we have this, we can actually go back to our database and click go. As you guys can see, we have a new comment section table. Now, if you do actually go to structure at the very top here, as you guys can see right now, we don't actually have any rows. If you go to structure, you can actually see the data uh, type that we need to put in here. So now that we have the database up and running, we can actually go ahead and go down to our text editor, set up a new document, and create our front page for the website. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one as index.php. Now in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up a very basic HTML5 template which we're gonna use for our front page. I'm gonna go ahead and write something else down in the body part here, which is going to be whatever we want to comment on. Now, in this example, we're just gonna go ahead and say we have a video on this page, and we want people to be able to write comments for this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write a very basic video, and I do actually have a shortcut to just write this out really quickly like you guys just saw here, um, but you guys should not create a video by now because this is basic HTML. So underneath this video, we're gonna go ahead and create a comment section using just HTML, which means we need to have a form that has some type of input that we can actually write inside of and submit using a button. So I'm gonna go ahead and write text area inside our form, the opening and closing tag. And inside the text area, the first tag, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name and set it equal to single quotes, not double quotes. Of course, it still works with double quotes, but for later, you're gonna thank me for using single quotes to begin with. So in here, we're gonna go ahead and say message, because why not just call this text area for message so we know what it is. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and go on top of the text area and create two inputs. Well, let's actually just create one for now and set the type equal to single quotes, hidden. Which means that we can actually see the input, but it can still be submitted when we hit the button. I'm gonna give it a name, equal to, single quotes, as user ID, because inside our database, we need to have three different values we need to submit when we write a post. The user ID, the date, and the message. So after this one, I'm gonna go ahead and set a value for this input equal to single quotes. And because we don't need to have a login system for this example in this episode, we're just gonna go ahead and set this one as anonymous. And let's see if I can spell this, anonymous. I think this is spelled correctly. I'm not American, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is going to be what it says inside the database then. Now, now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and just copy this line paste it below and change the name to date because we also need to submit the date for whatever we're writing in here. I'm gonna set the value to something else. 
for now, we don't actually have the value that we need to put in here because it has to be the current date time. Um, so let's just go ahead and set that up right now. So at the very top of our front page, or inside the header, if you did actually split up the document, we're gonna go ahead and write some PHP tags. Inside the PHP tags, we need to tell it that if we were to actually go in and call on a date function using PHP, what date time format should it be? Like what time zone should we actually use for the date format? So I'm gonna go ahead and write date underscore default underscore time zone underscore set parentheses semicolon. So inside the parentheses, we need to tell what kind of format we need to have it in. So I'm gonna write single quotes. I'm gonna write, at least in my case, Europe backslash Copenhagen, because I live in Denmark, so I would like for it to be Copenhagen time. Now, if you don't know what to put in here, just go ahead and Google it. Uh, just go ahead and Google the the format or the, the function name and you know whatever you can put in here if you live in America or if you live in India or somewhere else in the world. Um, but this basically just takes the current time in Denmark when we do actually submit the post. So now that we have that up here in the very top, we can go back down to our form and let's actually go ahead and put this inside PHP quotes. The entire form, I mean, like so. And in order to actually see the form on the website, we need to echo the form out. So make sure you write echo, double quote, and then at the end here, we're gonna write double quote, semicolon. So now that we have that, we can go inside the value, which is equal to nothing right now, and say double quotes, punctuation, and inside here, we can actually go ahead and write the PHP date format or date function, which is where we're gonna tell it how to write the format we're gonna insert into the database. Because right now, as you guys can see, the data type we set for the date was date time, which means that it has to be a very specific way that we write out the date that we submit you know, to the database. So now that we have the date function down here, we are going to write single quotes, and then we need to set it to year dash M dash D. Now notice that I did actually write year as capitalized Y because we need to have that space. And then we need to set the time, which is going to be a capitalized H colon I colon S, which is basically the hour format, the minutes and the seconds. Now, the hour format, the reason it's a capitalized H is because we're using a 24-hour time format. We're not using the 12-hour, we use AM and PM, uh, but we're using 24 hours. So now that we have this, we do actually have the comment section almost ready because we need to add a button as well. So at the bottom here, we're gonna add a button. And inside the button, tags, we're going to go ahead and write um, comments. So it actually says comment inside the button and you can actually click it. Now the button itself, we're going to go ahead and give a name equal to submit. And we're going to give it a type, which is going to be equal to submit as well. So now that we have this, let's actually go ahead and see what we actually have done inside our browser. So if I were to go to my comment section website, you guys can see we have a video and we have a comment section down here, which looks very ugly right now, but we will actually style it at one point. Uh, let's actually go ahead and move down the button so it's not on the right side here by going right after the text area down in our PHP code and say break, like so. Refresh, and you guys can see we moved it down. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and, let's actually go ahead and style it. Let's just go ahead and make it nice. So I'm gonna open up a new file, save it as style.css inside my root folder, and link to it inside my front page. So I'm gonna go inside my head tag, and link to style.css 
Again, if you think I'm writing fast when I'm writing the HTML, you should know how to write HTML before you go into this episode. So just go ahead and copy this if you don't know how to write it. So now that we have this, we can actually go into our style.css and say, okay, so inside this website, we have a text area. Open up the tags in here so we can actually write code and give it a width. And we're going to set the width as, I don't know, 400 pixels. We're going to give it a height as 100 pixels, I guess. I, let's actually go ahead and set this one to 80 pixels because that might be too much. Let's give it a background color as hashtag FFF, which is white. And let's go ahead and set the resize to none because we don't want to be able to stretch our comment section or like our text area. As you guys can see, I can actually grab onto it and resize it, which is not very good inside a website. Now I can actually resize it and we have a fixed size for this text area. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and style the button. So I'm going to go ahead and go underneath here and say we have a button. Give it a width as 80 pixels, I guess. A height as 30 pixels. Let's actually go ahead and set this one to 100 pixels in width, which is good enough. Let's give it a background color, hashtag, and let's go ahead and set this one to 282828, which is a dark gray. And let's remove the border by setting the border to none. And let's actually go ahead and change the color of the text. Set it equal to hashtag FFF, which again is white. And let's go ahead and set our font weight. Let's actually start with the font family and set it to Arial, which I know is not a very pretty font, but we don't want to worry about having to import fonts in this episode. So we set it to Arial and say font uh, weight and set it to 400. So now we get this looking thing. So now we actually have some sort of uh, section down here. Let's actually go and do one more thing. Uh, let's go to our button and say the cursor when we hover on the button needs to be set to pointer, which basically means that we get right now, as you guys can see, we don't actually get a hand symbol when I hover on the button. Now, when I refresh the browser, you can see we get a hand symbol. So it actually looks like a, a clickable thing. Um, so now we basically have a comment section. The next thing we're going to have to do is actually go ahead and write the PHP code to submit the comments. And then the episode afterwards, we're going to worry about actually showing the comments underneath here. And then after that, we'll actually look into creating a login system where you need to be logged in in order to write comments. Okay, so that's how it's going to be like. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's already pretty long and I hope to see you guys next time.